But this also kind of got in the back of my mind going this idea of can we grow a 13th cranial nerve that really feels like the ideal neural interface. Biology has given us other examples of fiber bundles that get information in and out of the brain for really any purpose that the brain needs it. Um, is it possible to add a 13th biological wire um, that instead of having an eye at the other end or having a, a bunch of muscles at the other end had a USB-C port basically. And so the high level intuition here is like, what can we add to the brain? How does the brain do this? Um, like how does, bi how does nature do this on its own? And the answer is it uses neurons. And so this kind of prompts a question, what happens if we add more neurons to the brain? And the answer is they wire, they grow in and wire up um, and give you these bi-directional chemical synapses. And so this has led to a, an approach that we call biohybrid, uh, like biohybrid neural interfaces. And it really feels like it has the scalability that the many conventional methods don't. Now there are alternatives to electrodes. So tell us what a biohybrid interface is. Yeah. So a biohybrid neural interface is when we take heavily engineered stem cell derived neurons in a dish, we load those into the electronic device. And then what you place into the brain is, is just the engrafted cells. So we're not placing any metal or any, like no electronic or mechanical component goes into the brain. Instead, you're growing All we do is, yeah, we basically the graft these, these cells onto, onto the brain through an appropriate starting point. And then those grow out, form new connections, just as kind of more, more of the brain. And this is because mother nature is really good at growing cells into groups of other cells and so on. So you're taking advantage of that. Yeah, we're letting biology do as much of the heavy lifting as we can.